So this week, I made a spec commercial for a New Balance using Unreal Engine, MetaHumans, and Marvelous Designer. Now, if you're interested in this workflow, I made an in-depth tutorial that's available on this YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the process of making this particular spec commercial with MetaHumans and some of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to make all of this possible, including the slow motion, things I did in Marvelous Designer, and stuff I did on the MetaHuman side. It's a lot to wrangle all together, so even for me, it's really helpful to put this process, you know, into a video where it's all in one place. So here we are in Unreal Engine 5, and I've made a new MetaHuman. This is just one of the presets that's available. So go ahead and make a MetaHuman. And next, let's talk about the shoes down here. How did these shoes get made? Well, I cheated a little bit, though it's honestly becoming more and more a part of my workflow. I used AI. I know. I'm guilty. I'm going to jail for it. But anyway, if you want to 3D model these yourself, I could make a video on that. It's not too difficult, but it does take time. These shoes took me about one minute to make. I mean, with a little work in Maya, but they were really quick and easy. So the first step in making these New Balance shoes was to go to the New Balance website, look up a pair of like cool looking running shoes and just download a high quality side view of it. For this project, I'm using a company called tripo.ai. And the difference with them is that when you feed it the image and it generates the mesh, they have a really nice feature for automatic retopology and parts. So in this case, I only opted to use the retopology. I didn't try to break it into like shoelaces as separate or the sole as separate. Um, but I was really happy with the end results and it was really fast. Something that it doesn't do well is that if you look at the shoes from this way, the end is backwards because I just mirrored the shoe. So clearly in the real life model, you have to actually flip the end. So again, not a perfect workflow, but this was a project uh, mostly about the cloth solve. And I just wanted the fastest way to get some nice looking sneakers from MetaHumans. Well, turns out Tripo 3D Gen from one image is pretty incredible. Now, the special thing about this is that I've created an outfit asset for MetaHumans from the socks and the shoes, and it will automatically cut out the entire MetaHuman foot. And then I can use this uh, sock and sneaker outfit on any MetaHuman and it'll fit perfectly. If you're interested in learning how to actually make outfit assets and get the format right and actually be able to sell them even on Fab if you want, I don't know if you used AI, you probably shouldn't sell them on Fab, but if you made them the good old fashioned way and you want to learn how to do that, I have a course on that and that is linked in the description below. So that's the socks and shoes. And next let's talk about the animation. For the mocap for this project, I use my Vicon mocap system. And that motion is available at narrativemotion.com right now. You can get the jogging animation, which is not the best jog in the world. I use a little stationary treadmill that doesn't go very fast, so I can't run very fast. It's actually like kind of like a walk. I just try to make it look like a run. Maybe someday I'll have a faster treadmill. But anyway, if you need a running animation, there's one available there. But the cool one is really the warm-up animation where I'm kind of like stretching and jumping up and down and whatnot. That exact animation from this spot is available again at narrativemotion.com. So I've gone ahead and added our MetaHuman to this sequence and applied the running warm-up mocap from narrativemotion.com. If you're working with MetaHumans and you're struggling with cloth solve, one of the main culprits is usually the animation itself. That's why working with mocap is so nice. You get natural motion from mocap, natural timing, natural physics. And of course, with cloth solve, the thing that's animating the cloth is the body animation. So again, mocap goes really, really well with cloth solve if you want it to look realistic, like when you're using a metahuman. So if you watched my other tutorial on this workflow to Marvelous Designer, you'll know that we don't want to start like this. That wouldn't be the worst in the world, but what we actually want to start with is an A pose, or in this case, a T pose. So, so we're going to want to make a T pose for this character, and this is specifically for, again, the Unreal Engine to Marvelous Designer workflow. It's going to make things a lot better. So let's say 30 on the arm. And nope, more than 30 on the arm. Yeah, maybe like something like this. That's a little bit too much. But let's go ahead and even these out a bit. Looks like we want a little bit higher on this shoulder. I might bring the shoulders down a little bit, actually. Like this, a little bit straighter. 
And, you know, something like this, anything in this world where the arms are straight are, is going to make our lives a lot easier. So let's go ahead and export this T-pose. This is a somewhat um, tricky process here, but we want to click on the metahuman body and then go to details and go to the actual body. And we want to disable the post-process blueprints. So we're going to bake animation sequence. I'm going to go up to this. We'll go to new balance and I'm going to say MH. T pose a one. And what we want to do now is blend in the T pose in the front of this animation. And we'll just kind of pop this right there. And uh, it kind of, you might want like a little bit of more room in the blend. You don't need a ton of space here, but just so that it starts in T pose and then he starts walking in, right? So you could give yourself a little bit more room depending on your animation. So we're done with our mocap editing. We've created a T-pose. We have our narrative motion animation retargeted and we are ready to export. Again, in my opinion, what we wanna do, this is like one of the nuances of this workflow is I'm keeping the post-process blueprint on. If you wanna turn it off, because for your workflow, completely fine. Overall, it's not a huge difference, especially if the clothing covers like the whole body. It's not a big deal at all. So let's go to the body and we're gonna right click and bake animation sequence. Let's go and check out that animation sequence. Um, this is an important part of the workflow. It's the two clo one. We have our T pose that blends into our mocap. Boom, 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 perfect, right? So what we wanna do now is get this ready to send to uh, Marvelous Designer slash Clo. I use that, I use Clo and Marvelous Designer kind of interchangeably. Clo is like shorter to say. So let's add a skeleton mesh and it's gonna be our runner our runner's face, we're not gonna have the hair. And then we're gonna to want to add our runner outfit, which are the shoes and socks uh, in this case. And when we send this to Marvelous Designer, Unreal Engine is gonna combine all this together and animate it and it makes the workflow really easy. So we have Marvelous Designer open. Let's head back to Unreal Engine. Important step of this process, we wanna to go to Clo MD Live Sync mode, make sure that it's green, that's it. So we have our assembled metahuman here with the head, with the shoes and socks that we 3D generated and the narrative motion mocaps looking really good. So let's go ahead and we're gonna send this to Clo again using skeletal mesh. That's the way that I'm doing it. You can do geometry cache. There's lots of ways. However, I just personally like skeletal mesh. It's very fast. So here we are in Marvelous Designer and let's hit play. We can see we start in our T-pose and we warp into our narrative motion mocap. So everything's looking great. So let's go ahead and make a really quick outfit and I'll show you exactly how I approach this in every case. I'm gonna hit Y. We're just gonna bring up the, whatever this is called. And then I'm gonna go to Clo Connect. Connect is where you can kind of go, uh, it's sort of like the Unreal Engine Marketplace slash uh, fab, <laughs> I'm old. And we can go look for patterns. And a lot of them are free and a lot of them are paid and you can make them and sell them there too. So if you see any ones that look like this, they have this kind of like official uh, connect official, those are all free. And that's where I'm used. That's what I use to start almost all of my outfits. Uh, but there's some really cool paid ones as well. So I am going to choose wind breaker or I'm going to search for it. And I'm gonna look for the actual one that I used. I think it was this. Actually, I think it was this one with the, with the zippers and stuff. So there it is, MV2 wind jacket. You can search windbreaker, it does show up. These patterns are free. So I'm actually going to go do the shorts uh, next. And I'm gonna just move this over here for now. I'm gonna hit control K. And in here are again, some free, really good shorts to get started from. If you know Marvelous Designer, it's just the beginning. You can start customizing it. For me, it was the final. So again, I don't remember which one. I think these are running shorts here. Perfect for a New Balance spec commercial. So we should be done with the Clo Connect part. So couldn't couldn't be easier. And um, these just, again, just happen to fit the MetaHuman like immediately. So I'm just gonna sim those. Great. So again, why are we in a T pose? Why not an A pose? And I'll show you that reason right now. And let's just generally get this outfit matched to the body here. Okay, in most cases, when you're in Marvelous Designer and you're making arms, it's like sleeves for the clothing, you can see here, they are straight, they're not bent. So a T-pose is much easier to fit this than an A-pose because the arm is at an angle and it's bent. So I'm just gonna rotate this and we'll go like that. Now it's gonna sort out the chest part really easily. The part that gets tangled really quickly is the wrist. So you really just wanna get the wrist um, sorted as well as possible 
and then the majority of the arm if you can as well. So we're going to rotate it down. And you could use arrangement points if you have everything set up for that. But sometimes, depending on the outfit, it's too complicated to really do that. So for me, it's been really helpful to, again, just put the metahuman in a T-pose, you know, morph it in after in the animation, and then fitting almost any garment from the marketplace. Nine times out of ten, the arms, are, again, are perfectly straight. So it's really easy to fit that on there without having to fight it too, too much. Okay, so I drop selection. Let's get this thing rotated on there. And we want the wrist through the hole. That's like the most important part here. Get this up. And then the rest of it, it's probably gonna sort out on its own just fine. How's the back? We're a little bit out on the head, but let's hit simulate. And yeah, pretty good. So for my example, I took the um, hood off. So while simulating, again, we just take it off. It will get caught on the ear and whatnot. And, you know, if you really know what you're doing in Marvelous, you can go ahead and kind of like alter the pattern, kind of cheat a little bit with the hood so it's not so, like, standing up near his face. It's, it's certainly possible. So there it is. Like, again, just, like, really simple. Two free patterns from Marvelous Designer, Clo Connect, and we're off to the races. This is what I used. But what I am going to change is I'm going to select everything, and I'm going to go from density 20 to density 10 which gives it more resolution. And I've been liking 10 quite a bit. I've done a little bit of five, which is like even more um, resolution, but it can get a little unwieldy depending on the outfit. And of course it just takes longer to sim. So 10 is kind of like my happy place where like, again, the, the spot that I put out was 10. It's not the highest quality you could put out, but I think it looks pretty good against metahumans overall. So I've been sticking with 10 quite a bit. And now I'm going to switch the sim quality to animation stable and things are going to get like twice as slow, but the animation is sort of damped. Um, there's similar settings in Unreal Engine 5. If you do chaos cloth with like how fast it can accelerate, how far it can move, that sort of thing. This is just a really good preset that I don't have to think too much about. And that's what I like about Marvelous Designer. This whole process in Marvelous is like, let me just go get a free pattern chuck it on there, change one setting, hit simulate, and we're ready to go. That's what I like in this process. This is the whole thing, filmmaking and Unreal Engine and making games is hard enough. Marvelous Designer just makes it really easy for me. So let's sit here and just watch this thing cook. Go T2 Tower, go. Um, I'm very fortunate to now be uh, a Dell NVIDIA uh, like ambassador because they sent me this workstation and now I can just do really fast cloth solves all day like it's nothing. So it's still a little bit below real time, but again, pretty pretty fast for uh, animation stable at 10 density. It's, this is this is very fast. I, I, don't, I don't think you can network accelerate Marvelous Designer. There's probably not many computers that do this much faster than this. So this is my workflow. Um, if there's things about the cloth solve you don't like, you can do things like pinning, you can do weft and warp, you can go into the physical properties of the outfit and make it like, you know, less bouncy or, you know, feel like thicker, like denim or something like that. But I get a lot of mileage out of the default settings. Um, and maybe over time, as I do this more and more, I'll have, um, you know, more opportunity to play with the physical settings and really be like, oh, the bottom part's silk and the top part's leather and, you know, have that difference show up. So let's go back into Unreal Engine, our scene here. We could close the sequence, it doesn't really matter, but it's nice for previewing. And we're gonna wanna make sure that again, we're, we're synced here. And it's pretty much the stock setting, single, thin, unified, include the cache, and don't bring in the avatar or anything else. And we didn't do any fancy translucent materials, I don't think, actually, we'll see what happens. But anyway, let's go ahead and click update and it's going to do uh, a sync between Marvelous Designer and Unreal Engine and bring it right in here. So boom, here we are in Unreal Engine 5 with our uh, synced cloth here. And what I'm gonna do now is just instantly save it. We're not even gonna preview it, just save it. So it, again, so we did update to get it in and then we're gonna actually save it. So clo here, we're gonna go to running warm up. Okay, and let's get this thing saved. And once it's in here, now we don't need Marvelous Designer and we have our final uh, geometry cache animation that we need to get this whole thing put together. We'll see that we've lost our garment over there. We still have this USD stage actor, which we could honestly just delete at this point. And let's go bring in our geometry cache for the running warmup. You could rename it here. I'm just going to leave it called render mesh. And I'm going to actually parent it or attach it rather to the metahuman blueprint. 
zero it out. We'll see that it's synced and it's right on top of it. I'm going to grab render mesh and throw it into sequencer. Make sure that you're at the zero, being at the sequence, and turn on geometry cache. And how's the syncing? Pretty good. I'm just like loosely recreating what I had before. We have our camera, we have our shot. And as he walks up and kind of jumps up and down, I sort of framed for the jumping, which was here. We just want to frame so that his head doesn't go out. So I roughly framed it like this. It's kind of a centered look um, as far as like the headroom goes. Uh, and so now let's do some slow motion. So the way that we want to do this is we go to add and we're going to do time dilation track. And if we do 0.5, um, it renders kind of interestingly, but if we hit 0.5, you'll see that it's now um, slowing it down by 50%, 100%. I don't know. It's 0.5. And so it's slower. So what I did, I think was 0.25. And what's cool is that all the physics is happening. Um, the physics is actually happening in slow motion as well, versus like this being like, it's just animating slowly. And then the physics would be slow. This is more like akin to if you filmed this in real life with a high speed camera versus just making the animation slow, then the physics would react slowly as well. So this is what gives this live action slow motion feel. And with cloth solve and with physics hair, it just looks like absolutely incredible. And I, I, I'm going to be using this like quite a bit. So that wraps it up for this video. I know I already made a tutorial showing this process, but for me, I really enjoy using MetaHumans, cloth solve and mocap. When we're all in Unreal Engine and working in real time, it's the closest thing to like real world cinematography and filmmaking that I can get to. I can just film this over and over again and light it and come with different camera moves and maybe more interesting backgrounds than a psych wall. It just activates the the neurons in my brain that that really like creating things, metahumans, cloth solve, it all does that for me. So I like doing this quite a bit. And hopefully if you're looking to invest the time into learning a new tool like Marvelous Designer and a workflow and integrating that into Unreal Engine, Hopefully this gives you the confidence that it's not too difficult that with the new pipeline. I think it's 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 a lot more approachable now and that these are the results that you can look to get. Again, you saw me in the settings. It's almost all default. It just works really well. So it is worth the time investment if your clients or your projects do need cloth solves for your MetaHuman. There's nothing simpler than Marvis Designer. I can tell you that. And it's really, really stable. The results are just incredible every time here, as you can see, like just like absolutely nuts. I actually left the zippers and the trims on it. I should have done that before. This looks even better. But um, let me know if you have any questions about this workflow. Feel free to join my Discord channel, Workman Labs. That'll be linked in the description below. And if you're looking for mocap for your metahumans for cloth solve, specifically narrativemotion.com, check it out. And I'll see you on the next video.